Now I'll start the third lecture of week 10 of this course. In the last two lectures, uh, we saw the crystal structures of, of uh, simple elements and binary compounds. Now I'll go to some other crystal structures that are very, that are very commonly seen and uh, uh, they have lot of relevance for uh, many solid state materials, uh, especially ferroelectric and uh, magnetic materials. So, these two structures are uh, the, that we will discuss in today's lecture are perovskite and spinel and uh, I will just give the basic structures of perovskites and spinels. Uh, it turns out that there is a lot more to, to these materials than the basic structures that I will be showing, but I just want you to see how, how these basic structures are constructed. So, uh, week 10 lecture 3 will be perovskites and spinels. So, let us look at a spinel first. So, the spinel, uh, the typical uh, material is MgAl2O4. So, MgAl2O4 is the typical material for a spinel. These are, these are of interest because these are magnetic oxides. So, uh, so there is an interest in these materials uh, and, uh, and people try to make different kinds of spinels okay, and try to see their magnetic properties. So, so, the basic structure of spinel can be understood in the following way. Uh, you have oxygen 2 minus the oxide ion that forms a CCP cubic close packed and now the Mg 2 plus cations they occupy one eighth of the tetrahedral site. And uh, the Al3 plus ions, okay, they occupy half of the octahedral sites. Okay. Now there are a total of eight tetrahedral sites in uh, in one uh, in one conventional cubic close packed cell. Okay. Now, if you occupy one eighth of those with uh, one eighth of the tetrahedral sites, that means you are occupying only one of the tetrahedral sites okay. and uh, you are occupying two out of the four octahedral sites. Now, uh, it turns out that if you do this, if you do this, so, so you, can, you can see it, you, if you just imagine that you have a, that you have a cubic close packed. Okay, so let me let me show a cubic close packed with uh, oxygens. Okay, uh, I'll show I'll show the oxygens in black. So if you take a cubic close packed structure, and uh, now if if you occupy only one eight, that is one out of the eight tetrahedral sites. Okay, and uh, similarly, if you occupy only two out of the four octahedral sites, okay, then uh, something happens, uh, which is uh, which can be understood quite uh, easily. Okay, uh, you can you can see that. Uh, if you just occupy one, let us say you occupy this site here, this tetrahedral site here. Now, you can immediately see that now the cell okay, will be distorted because now there is an atom only on this part, but not in the remaining part of the cell and so the cell will tend to distort. Okay. So, uh, similarly, if you want to occupy two out of the eight octahedral sites, so the octahedral sites, I will show them in purple. So, now, uh, you could do it in different ways. Okay. Let us say you occupy the one in the center and now uh, that is one site. Now, one more site you have to get by occupying 4 out of the remaining 12 sites okay. and uh, again, again you can do them in, di in different ways okay. and in each case you will get, uh, you'll get uh, different occupancy. So, for example, suppose I, 
suppose you occupy this and uh, let us say occupy this. So, now I have I have half of the octahedral site are occupied okay. and uh, you can see that uh, that now the the distribution of material in the cell is not uh, is not symmetric and the cell will tend to distort okay and uh, you can so there is a natural tendency to distort whenever you have this partial occupancy of uh, of uh, tetrahedral and octahedral sites okay so what uh, happens is that is that uh, uh, this this individual one close packed subunit is distorted but uh, but then four of these uh, rather eight of these eight of these okay so uh, there are uh, there are 8 CCP units combined to give to give a bigger cubic unit cell. Okay. So, what I mean is that is that now the unit cell for uh, for spinel okay, actually actually that contains uh, that contains 8 mg 16 aluminum and 32 oxygen. Okay. So, this is the actual composition of the unit cell. Okay. So, that one unit cell it is uh, you can think of it as composed of uh, 8 uh, CC, eight, 8 of these uh, individual CCP units. Okay. So, but it is but it is cubic cubic structure and you still have oxygen oxygen occupying uh, sites that uh, look like a cubic close packed, but now uh, now it is a much uh, bigger cell and uh, Mg will occupy one eighth of the tetrahedral sites and aluminum will occupy half of the octahedral sites. Okay. So, so this is the structure of spinel. I'll just show the. Uh, I'll just. Uh, so, what you should think is that this same cell is repeating in all directions. It repeats two times. So, it repeats this way, and then even in this direction, it repeats, and so. this is your so so this whole this whole uh, this whole cube this bigger cube okay is the unit cell of uh, of uh, spinel okay and uh, and now uh, what happens is that these uh, the the octahedral sites okay are suitably arranged so that so that uh, the whole uh, so that there is no net distortion on this cubic cell okay so the octahedral and tetrahedral uh, sites are symmetrically arranged with respect to this cube and uh, this uh, cubic uh, this larger cube is the unit cell of mg mg al2o4 spinel okay uh, now uh, if you if you look at the detailed positions of the anions uh, you can of of the cations so the anions will always occupy these uh, uh, ccp sites Okay. Now, the, the cations will be located in a, in a rather uh, uh, complicated arrangement. I will just uh, show this. Okay. Well, well okay, okay. I will not uh, I will not show the detailed arrangement of these cations, okay. but uh, basically this is the unit cell of, uh, of spinel. And, uh, and and again i should mention that each of these individual ccp units will actually be distorted okay uh, because they have an asymmetric uh, distribution okay but overall the whole cell will be a perfect cube okay it will be a larger perfect cube okay now um, this spinel 
the if you if you look at a general spinel okay a spinel has a formula a b2 o4 okay and uh, in this in this uh, formula the a is in the tetrahedral side and b is in the oct b2 are in the octahedral sides and of course the oxygen is in the cubic close pack if you have this arrangement it is called a normal spinel normal spinel or simply spinel okay there is a there is another closely related structure okay where uh, where instead of having a at the tetrahedral sides you have b you have half of the b's at the tetrahedral sides and the octahedral sides are partially occupied by both a and b so this is a related structure okay where the only difference is that instead of having all a's at the tetrahedral side you have b at the tetrahedral side and a and b together occupy the octahedral sides okay and uh, this is referred to as inverse spinel okay and this is also a structure that is found in found in nature okay so let's look at some examples of spinels okay now uh, also also in this spinel uh, we we now we had mg had a had a had a charge of 2 plus and al had a charge of 3 plus so this uh, mg al2 o4 okay so the oxidation state of mg is uh, 2 and that of uh, al is 3 okay so this is referred to as a 2 3 spinel okay and uh, there are several other spinels okay the 2 3 spinels uh, you can have for example you can have co al2 o4 you can have uh, C U C R two S four. Okay, so 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 oxygen is replaced by sulfur and aluminum is replaced by chromium. Okay, then uh, uh, you can have M G F E two O four. You can have N I F E two O four. then uh, then you could have you could have other compounds okay uh, for example you could have uh, uh, fe 2 ge o4 okay uh, this is a 2 4 spinel okay and uh, and and here ge occupies the uh, uh, well okay so, uh, so, so, so this is a two-four spinel. Okay, uh, then you could have uh, so, so the oxidation state of GE is uh, is 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 plus four. Okay, and now there are two two ions. Okay, instead of having instead of having Mg instead of having uh, AB two, you have something like A2BO4. Okay, but the charge on uh, B has to be larger. Then you could have uh, you could have spinels uh, such as uh, another example of uh, such a spinel is Mg2 Ti O4. Okay, this is also a two four spinel. Okay, uh, then you could have uh, you could have a more complicated spinel. Okay, you could have something like uh, lith lithium aluminium titanate okay so so this is also like a spinel now you have a 1 a 3 a 4 1 3 4 spinel okay uh, but uh, these are also this also forms a spinel structure uh, si similarly you could have something like uh, li co sb o4 this is a 1 2 5 spinel so the I mean uh, antimony has a oxidation state of plus five, cobalt is plus two, lithium is plus one, and uh, and together they add up to minus eight, which is compensated by the by the oxi uh, they add up to plus eight, which is compensated by the oxide charge. 
Okay. So, there are several examples of spinel, okay, uh, spinels that are uh, observed uh, that are seen okay, and uh, it is indeed a very common structure. It is, it is uh, as I said it is well known as a magnetic oxide. Okay. The next structure that I want to talk about is the perovskite structure uh, and the typical example of a perovskite is, a, is strontium titanate. Now, uh, strontium titanate, uh, now the structure can be understood in the following way. So, uh, you take strontium and form a simple cube. So, let me color code this. Uh, so, I will say SR is in black. So, you form a simple cube of, of uh, strontium, strontium atoms okay. and now uh, what you do is you put the oxygen atoms at the face centered. So, you have put uh, so clearly you, you have three oxygen atoms okay so you have six oxygen atoms each of them contributes half to this unit cell so in this in this unit cell you have three oxygen atoms okay so so uh, these are the oxygen and then the titanium you put right at the middle at the body center of this cube okay so so this will have the formula srtio3 okay and uh, this is the structure of perovskites. This is the basic structure of perovskites. Uh, now you can uh, you can think of this. In, you can look at the same structure in a slightly different way. So suppose I put it, the Ti atoms at the corners. Okay. So if I put the Ti atoms at the corners of the cube, okay, then uh, I'll have Ti. So, I am just depicting it slightly differently. So, instead of putting strontium at the corners, I am putting Ti at the corners. So, I go and, and you know you can you can just take this to the next cell and you can complete it. Okay. So, then the, then the titanium will form a simple cube and now with respect to the titanium, the, the oxygen atoms okay, will be located at the edge centers. Okay, so, the, so these are the locations of the oxygen atoms okay. and uh, the, the strontium will be located at the body center. Okay. So, I will show it again in black. So, so there are two equivalent ways of looking at this the strontium titanate structure. Okay. Uh, now, uh, notice Notice that in this uh, in this way of looking at it, there is no atom at the face center. Okay, so 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 if you form the unit cell using titanium, okay, then you don't have uh, you don't have any atoms at the face centers of this cube. Okay, whereas if you form the same unit cell using using uh, strontium, okay, then the strontium forms a simple cube. Oxygen occupies the face center. Okay, and uh, titanium occupies this uh, octahedral void. Okay. Now, now you can you can really think of this as a, as an SR O three SRO three which is forming a CCP. So the com the combination of strontium and oxygen together they seem to form a cubic close pack so 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 if you take if you take both strontium and oxygen together they seem to form a cubic close pack 
okay and uh, and this titanium is at the octahedral void so it's 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 at actually one fourth of the octahedral voids okay so you can you can also visualize this perovskite structure in this in this manner okay now uh, now of course uh, these perovskites materials are uh, are very uh, very uh, interesting for applications because they have very high dielectric constant okay in the case of strontium titanate strontium titanate it is uh, uh, it is centrosymmetric it is uh, centrosymmetric so so it is uh, it is because it has a high dielectric constant such a material is called a para electric material para electric material now uh, I will tell you a few other uh, materials. I mean, there are several materials that form perovskites. So, uh, other examples are uh, potassium niobate, potassium tant tantalate, lanthanum, lanthanum iron oxide. Anthonym vanadate. Okay. And then, uh, so so these are oxides. You can also have uh, you can also have things like uh, cesium, calcium, fluoride. Cesium, cadmium, B three or Br three. Uh, cesium mercury chloride okay uh, you can also have uh, strontium instead of having uh, titanium you could have tin oxide strontium stannate okay so these are all examples of perovskites okay now uh, there is an interesting thing thing that happens uh, in in the case of uh, if instead of strontium titanate you have a barium titanate okay and uh, i'll just go to that this has to do with uh, distortions that take place so so in the case of barium titanate there is uh, something interesting that happens okay now uh, if you look at uh, let's say let's say we look at uh, at this structure okay where you have the titanium at the corners of the cell Okay, and uh, oxygen at uh, these locations. Now, now let me just take a planar view of this. This, okay. So you have uh, you have titanium at the corners. Okay, I'm just making a planar representation. You have oxygen at the edge centers. Okay, and uh, it'll also be it'll also be located at these edge centers, but at uh, height of half. Okay, it'll also be located here, but that will also be uh, uh, that will be in the base layer. Okay, and uh, now uh, now you have the barium atom. Okay, that is located at uh, at a height of half. I'll show it in purple color. Okay, so this is the barium. now uh, this barium atom okay uh, it tends to distort a little bit to this side okay so it moves from the center it moves it moves from the location directly below the oxygen to a location about uh, it just moves by about 0.12 angstroms it just moves a little bit to the right to this point by 0 0.12 angstroms okay and uh, now 
because of this okay now uh, because of this these titaniums and oxygen they also move a little okay and uh, what this does is that it makes the cell tetragonal okay so uh, so it leads to a A tetragonal distortion so the unit cell of uh, bitio3 is uh, is tetragonal okay and uh, actually there's only a small difference the a a parameter a lattice parameter is uh, 3.995 angstroms whereas the c lattice parameter is uh, 4.034 angstrom so there's only a small distortion okay very small distortion okay but uh, this distortion okay this uh, distortion in the unit cell plays a very important role in the electrical properties okay so 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 because of this tetragonal distortion uh, BATIO3 is a ferroelectric material okay so it's a uh, ferroelectric is like uh, is the uh, is the analog of a ferromagnetic material but now now instead of applying a magnetic field you apply an external electric field and uh, you have domains of aligned uh, aligned uh, uh, barium titanate unit cells okay so there are uh, several other uh, several other distorted perovskites so several other distorted perovskites okay okay there are things like tilted perovskites etc okay and uh, what i want to say is that uh, is that uh, as we play around with different materials okay the perovskite structure gets slightly modified and uh, there are various distortions that uh, that uh, form okay and each of these will give you a slightly different uh, uh, structure okay and in some cases like 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 barium titanate you can actually you can actually see a uh, uh, tetragonal distortion so this is batio3 okay batio3 is the is the standard material for ferroelectric applications okay so uh, so uh, i won't i won't go i mean there are uh, there are a whole lot of whole lot of different perovskites and whole lot of different spinels but i won't be discussing that okay i will just uh, i just wanted to give you the basic uh, uh, feel of what a perovskite and what a spinel structure is okay so uh, with this i will conclude this uh, third lecture in the next lecture i will show a slightly different way of uh, looking at structures this is in terms of space filling polyhedra okay and then and then i'll also talk a little bit about alloys alloys where you have uh, where you have two different metals that are mixed and uh, what are the possibilities that can uh, happen when you have alloys what structures you can get okay thank you